Today we're going to talk about how to maintain your air jet sieve. However, prior to starting the inspection of the unit, we're going to make certain that we all have our protective eyewear, protective face mask, as well as gloves. It's all going to be predicated upon your requirements as far as your company and facility. So now to get underway. First and foremost, we're going to make certain that the power has been removed from the device. Secondly, we're going to take and remove any additional apparatus that may be connected to the device, such as your vacuum and your vacuum hose. Next, we're going to remove the wand because what's going to happen is we're going to rotate the machine completely upside down and then we're going to unthread the mounting feet. Once all four mounting feet have been removed, the bottom plate can be also removed and set aside. Now, again, the primary reason for this is to confirm that the filter here, which protects the vacuum pressure gauge, is clean. So, in a case such as this, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the filter by simply pressing against the hose and taking the hose off. All right. So as you can see, there is some material within the filter. Now the filter can either be completely replaced or it can be just cleaned out by using canned air. Now if you would, welcome here, and notice that the material was blown out. So we'll let this set while we inspect the rest. Okay, prior to entering into the filter, the air pressure is passed through this hose. As it's passed through the hose, it has to go through this elbow, and as you can see here, I'm going through. Now, within the elbow, I want you to notice, there's always the potential of accumulated material. That material must be removed. Otherwise, your vacuum pressure will be upset and have blockage and not give you the proper, let's say, indication. So in order to do that, we're gonna use just a very, very small Allen wrench. However, a paperclip can be used. And I know what we're gonna do is, just to give you an idea, this is the kind of material that can be built up. This is rather common, however, and you want to make sure that the hose is off both ends, the barbed end as well as the filter. Double check, just go around, and then use your canned air once again, and we will, as you can see, blow that out. Most importantly is the hose. So, once again, you want to make sure that the hose is clean. And I like to go from both sides only because it gives you a positive acknowledgement that the hose is clean. Last and equally as important is make certain that the threaded area is free of material. Now, it can be done as I'm doing right now with the opposite end of the Allen wrench, or if you can reach down inside here, blow it out with the canned air. Okay, now, installation of the elbow is a little bit tricky, but not impossible. You just don't want to cross thread the elbow, and once it's in place, it threads in place very simply. Okay. And then just secure it so it's snug. Put the hose back in place by sliding it over the barbed opening. Take your filter and notice you want the clear site because this way what will occur is you'll see any material build up. So that'll be your prime indicator as to whether you should change the filter 
or if the filter has accumulated material. Pressure fit. Okay, and you're complete. Now, I typically take and inspect the machine just to see if there's any missing parts or any lost components. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any. So at this point, I'm pleased with it. I then take the bottom plate, put the bottom plate back into position, rethread the mounting feet when they cooperate. There we go. Rotate the machine back over. Plug it back in and you're ready to run. Thank you.